Investors taking some profits after a record run this year in Wall Street. The Dow off 183 points. The question now is, uh, this is good news. we got the trade situation. we got a very strong consumer. That momentum takes us into the new year for a read on what we could expect in 2020. Market Watch is Troy Gajewski, Francis Newton Stacy, and Melissa Armo. Armo. Let me start with you, Francis. Um, you know, listen, I, I, I think we've got a tremendous amount of momentum heading into, into the new year. You look, I, I'll give you an example. November 15th. The Atlanta Fed had us a GDP for this quarter, 0.3. Now we're at 2.3%. And all the things that helped pick this up from, from GDP, from jobs, from wages, I don't see a, a betting anytime soon. No, so definitely the bull case is very clear, and the Fed is actually supporting that. And though they have sort of put a hold on lowering rates, they are still injecting a record amount of money at a record rate into the system. So that's going to support stock prices going forward. We're going to continue to watch the things that we have watched all year, which is China trade, which gave us some muted volatility into multiple all-time highs. Um, and we're just going to continue to watch that. If we think that, you know, phase two is coming or China's going to sign it or this is coming, I foresee that investors are not going to want to sell ahead of that news. And also just the Fed really clear that they're going to support the markets despite the fact that they've stopped cutting rates for now. So Alyssa, here's the great news with the Fed. If you're long the market, the two bears, the two hawks in the Fed are out. They don't vote next year, right? Rosengren and Esther George, they don't get a vote. And the most big, the biggest dub in the entire Fed universe, Neil Kaskari, he gets a vote. So at the very least, I think we'd be looking at a more dovish Fed. Well, I think it's really going to depend. 2018, remember, when we had that big sell-off in December was because of Fed raise rates. And I think they changed course pretty quickly. And then 2019 was a good year. And you saw, even with the trade issues, that the Fed was there supporting the market by lowering rates. I don't know what's going to happen happen though in 2020 because they may end up deciding to lower rates again if they're going to support the market if in fact we have more volatility. If this trade deal does not get done and the Fed may need to step in to try to support the market a little bit by lowering rates even if it's not anticipated to happen. Here's one thing Troy yeah. uh, that I don't think is brought up enough. There are tariffs on $360 billion of Chinese goods. I'm not talking about rhetoric uh, or scuttlebutt or guessing about you know what's going to happen next. These are in place. We didn't experience Smoot Hawley. Our GDP didn't go down 50%. Our unemployment rate didn't go from 6% to 25%. It's the exact opposite. 7 million job openings, 1.26 million more job openings than unemployment. Wages through the roof. I mean, this is an economic miracle against a backdrop that the experts two years ago said was impossible. Yeah, no, it's been incredible. I mean, you look at the job creation this year. I mean, we've, we're on pace to create 2 million jobs after creating 2.7 the year before. No economist thought we could create jobs at that level and pull as many workers back into the workforce. And what we're looking at now, you know, it, just in the real economy, is a combination of very healthy consumer spending. Remember, we have a tight enough labor market, 1.5 million more job openings than unemployed, to drive enough wage growth that the consumer can continue to delever and spend at a healthy rate. When you combine that with very aggressive federal spending, you're looking at 200 basis points of GDP growth without any contribution. Could we do 3% GDP next year? In your, in your no, system? I think two, two and a half is a real three, three, everything will have to hit. CapEx will have to come roaring back, which we don't think it will. Uh, the energy sector will have to come back, which we don't think it will. So, you know, this year we're trending around 2.25. Next year, somewhere between two and two and a half. We think One wild card I'm looking at is the uh, household formation. Third quarter GDP, we saw new residential home uh, investments up for the first time in I forgot how many, maybe seven, eight, ten quarters. It was a long number. And, and I think that could be sort of a, a headwind that becomes a tailwind next year. What should we be con most concerned about next year? Uh, most concerned about the repo market. If the Fed cannot substantiate the repo market. And, and just that's... so for folks who aren't really Wall Streeters, essentially, yes. Our financial system ran out of cash, cold, hard cash. That's it. The Fed was caught flat-footed, and now they're doing some emergency measures, and they're saying, no worry, folks, it was no big deal. All they really do is put money in and take money out. <laughs> That's all they do. So if that doesn't work and their support in putting mar uh, money in doesn't work, then that's sort of a risk. Also, the strong labor market may compress profit margins, which for those out there, that just means companies are earning a little less money and that could affect the equities. So that's another risk for next year. Um, and of course, yeah. the ever going risk is if you ever have problems in the credit markets, any kind of defaults in right. the credit markets. But well, aside from that, loan, they've increased loan limits in 2020. They're going to be up to 510. 510,000 Fannie Freddie, the loan limits are increasing, which is phenomenal. So, when you think about so, it, people are going to be able to buy more house and the right. banks are going to do those loans like hotcakes as long so, as 
Are you the housing market Friday. coming on strong next year? I think I think people, if they're if they're working. They are and they working. feel good about themselves. They do feel good And their about banks themselves. are going to increase. And the Fannie Freddie increase the loan limits. People are going to go out. And if they get qualified for those loans, which they are because they're working and they want to spend it. Housing, that is people's biggest expenses are housing. People want to have nice homes. I don't think it's ever going to get to the point where they do the crazy loans like sure, we saw sure. years ago. Yeah. But the fact that they're raising loan limits and, and Fannie and Freddie is going to do it, the banks are going to do those loans. And right, people pal. are going to get approved for them. Thank you all very much. And you, so far, you've won best earrings, although this is the first segment, okay? <laughs> Happy New Year. They're my New Year's earrings. Happy New Year. <laughs> Charles, what's going on? <laughs> 2020, uh, new decade. Up next, folks, the latest on two horrific attacks.